Um, roll call. Mr. Lawson. Mr. Fowler. Here. Mr. Johnson. Present. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Silver. Present. Mr. Hobbs. Present. Mr. Marshall. Present. Oh. Uh, Number one is to discuss the proposed adjustment of sales tax revenues as suggested by the Rapids Parish Police Jury. Okay, um, Mayor, can you kind of give us kind of an overview of, of what's, what's going on? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to do that with a little uh, help from Mr. Crutchfield, as we might need from time to time. We have had an opportunity to look at their proposal, uh, at least as it was reported in the paper, which I have to tell you all was the first time that we had seen it. Uh, in, in this uh, case, there are some background facts that are necessary. First of all, this tax was passed in, in 1967, and it allocates 33% of the one cent sales tax to uh, Alexandria. 50% goes to the uh, Rapids Parish School Board. Uh, I believe 9% uh, goes to the jury, and 5% goes to the city of Pineville. There are other municipalities uh, or cities and townships, excuse me, townships and villages that share in those other percentages. They were actually listed in the call. At the time when the 1967 tax passed, Ball was an unincorporated uh, township, so it did not share. Five years after that, it incorporated, and it started uh, its... Uh, really battle to become one of the, the ones that share directly. There was a court case uh, that occurred in 1979. There was actually a revote by the people uh, after this. This same situation came up and the people had a chance to vote after Ball Incorporated to decide whether it would come in and the people did not uh, vote on that. Uh, some statistics are helpful here. Uh, we've been following what's on the radio, and a lot of people, obviously, Mr. President, have strong feelings about this. Uh, folks you will hear will tell you that one of the important things is that uh, in Alexandria's best case, we probably have 38 or so percent, 38 percent of the parish population in the city. Uh, the numbers that were used in the paper are not Alexandria's population. They showed us trending down uh, Alexandria has trended up according to Louisiana Tech, which is charged by law with looking at that. So while you may look at the old U.S. Census numbers and its extrapolations, they are different, gentlemen, from what Louisiana Tech is saying. Uh, so number one is we don't believe that it's the case that Alexandria is going down. Number two, we are thankful, uh, and I know all of you are, and we talk about it all the time in these meetings, for everything that the folks out in the parish, and in, indeed eight to nine parishes do, spending money in this tax base. But it brings up a good point. Assuming we're 38 percent, and assuming that it's right to base what we're talking about on population, and we're not conceding that you base it on population, here are some numbers that you need to know. 52 percent of the tax base is supported by Alexandria in the whole parish, 52 percent. We're sharing 33 percent of that tax, but 52 percent of the tax base is Alexandria. Now, in fairness to Ball and all the other cities, uh, Pineville has been on a, a big growth trend, uh, or at least it's done well. We know there's a lot of building there and things going on. Uh, I'm sure that the mayor over there is probably thinking that his numbers may be different than how the census puts your numbers out. But the point is we are 52 percent and we're not going down uh, as has been uh, said. Um, 52 percent of the tax base is us. The, the argument there is but other people from the outside come in and spend money in our tax base. So the idea is they would share that in another way on this tax. And we understand that argument, gentlemen, and we're sensitive to that. But you, we can't go to another city either and just because we spend money there, they don't have to send back money to Alexandria. But it's different here because these are our immediate neighbors. And so we don't want to seem insensitive to that, and we're not. We're thankful for it. But we do pay for all the infrastructure uh, that outside folks get to use, and we pay for a lot of quality of life initiatives that benefit the whole parish, that allow companies to want to come here. And so I want to be careful that while Alexandria recognizes uh, that other folks contribute greatly to that 52 percent that don't live in Alexandria. We have employees. We have 900 folks here, many of whom work out, or excuse me, live out in the parish, but but work here. Now, here are the hard and cold facts, gentlemen. If you think that this doesn't affect us, uh, 
if you take our $50 million operational budget, uh, 50 million, we have an operational money. 75 or so percent of that is employment. Is that correct, Mr. Crutchfield? That's correct. All right, so that's 35 million. So we have 15 million in the services we provide beyond the employees. This proposal, as it is on the books, would take four of that 15 million. That's about 26 percent. Yeah, it's about 21 percent. It's about 21 percent. Uh, Four or fifty, I think it's 26, but I Forecast think David has run the actual Alexander numbers and he thinks it's closer to 21 percent. To, uh, to give you an idea of how that affects us, think back to the renewal we just passed and how it would have affected us not to have that happen. This is very similar to that. If we were to lose four million a year on this tax, which goes straight to operations and salaries under the 1967 call, we would have to cut, there's no question, and this isn't being an alarmist, non-essential services. Those things that aren't the prosaic services of the city. You're talking about the zoo, you're talking about the golf courses, all the things that attract people uh, and industry to the area, and by the way, are things enjoyed by folks parochially all over the parish. Uh, and we're not exaggerating about that, Mr. Marshall. This would be a serious uh, cutting time for Alexandria when it comes to budgetarily looking at uh, new constraints that would be imposed on the city. I don't believe that helps the tax base at all. Yeah, for me, this would be a media cut that the city would have to impose based on this tax. Uh, Mr. Johnson, that's an excellent question. I think that the concern here is if this was voted out by the jury to go to the people, we would have to start looking immediately at the possibility of budgetarily adjusting immediately. And, and here's why. Uh, the argument is if there's 38 percent of the people here, I'm, I'm quite sure that, you know, the uh, mayor Ball and others who are really the force behind it think, well, if there's 38 percent of the people here, we have a majority. Now, I don't want to alarm the, the people had exactly that percentage when they voted on this the last time, and I think thought through it, and according to the case that was tried in federal court that Ball lost on this same exact issue, the Fifth Circuit uh, United States Court of Appeals that sits in New Orleans, one under the United States Supreme Court, noted that the people then made a judgment call that it would not be good for the whole parish to pull this from Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria, again, recognizes what people do by spending money here. We do not want to seem insensitive to that. But you have to be careful when you hit the biggest tax generator in the area that hard that it won't bring everyone down. We all talk about regionalism. And we talk about, uh, so goes the, the, I think it's not just Alexandria, I think it's the Twin Cities. So go the Twin Cities, so go the parish. This would not be, in my estimation, given where we are in the plans we have the most fertile uh, infrastructure. Land. Mr. Johnson, we just had a big Today, article in the paper by the town talk about $15 million in needs. Well, Cure has only looked at wastewater and water at this point. The you know the other needs we have, have gentlemen, in other areas. To travel to For us to try to plan and go out and bond Atlantic, and lose this is going to be an impossibility. Infrastructure investment is the most important investment you can make as a city. You get about a six to one return for every dollar in infrastructure. And we wouldn't be able to do some the mayor, we also provide service for other communities, some of you know, the small towns. How would that impact them by us having to cut those services? Uh, I think it would greatly impact it, and, I, and I'm not sure why we, we're not discussing some of those things. We provide uh, animal sheltering for the parish at a level that probably the city is, according to our numbers, providing it at a lot more than, the than uh, we should be in terms of money. We provide uh, water out to IP. We provide all kinds of things that we would have to consider. It's not a threat. Here, those are things that we have to consider from a monetary standpoint to balance. In other words, at the end of the day, gentlemen, what I'm telling you is we cannot stomach losing four million a year. We have to start there as a baseline. We can lose four million a year. So we have to do everything we can uh, assuming this could happen, not to lose the four million. I don't want people to leave at all thinking that, well, Alexandria is the bigger city. They could stomach losing four million a year. We can't. Uh, 
we have a we have a budget that you, when you add in capital is a much larger budget. But we're constrained to look at our operational budget, and our operational budget would be drastically affected by four million. And Mr. Crutchfield may have some other things he may want to add about it. Uh, the Red River has become a haven for the tax base. Right as of last month, David was funded. Alexandria was 52.6 percent. Mr. President, Pineville was 13.2 percent. Ball was 1.5 percent. Woodworth was 0.47 percent. Forest Hill was 0.11 percent. Glenmore was 0.63 percent. LeCount was 0.47 percent, and Boyce was 0.68 percent. The rest of the parish was 30.26 percent. So Alexandria, if if you look at the whole parish and minus out all other cities is 52 and minus all other cities the rest of the parish is 30. We're funding the tax base there can be no question about that to help our whole parish uh, despite any negatives or anything else else that's said about the city that is a fact that is undisputed and I mean, this is what happens month in and month out. One of our Question. Is uh, second participant, largest participant is Pineville. Would they join hands? Would they suffer too proportionally if this thing were to become a reality? Uh, under the scenario, Pineville would, under the scenario proposed in the paper, gentlemen, I can't tell you that these guys aren't ready to sit down and talk. Indeed, that's why I think they call this meeting. So I believe that we're all supposed to go over uh, shortly and, and have a good faith discussion. They invited all the mayors to talk about how it would affect them. Uh, this may be just their proposal right now, so I don't want to jump the gun and assume it's the only proposal. But what I saw in the paper and what Mr. Crutchfield has related to me is a proposal that would shift us from basing the sales tax allocation on tax base to population. Uh, that model doesn't really, that, I, I'm not going to concede that that's a fair way to do it for the very reasons that we, we've just gone over. It, it's easy to say, well, it should be straight population. But if it were straight population, the way that they arrive at lowering us to 17%, Mr. Marshall, is this. They take the 50% and minus it out because no one wants to take from the school board. We all agree with that. You minus that out, so then you have to half the others. So you're half in our 33 to 17 based on population, uh, basically, I guess, is the math. Is that correct? That's what it appears. It appears. I, don't, I haven't seen the uh, actual formula that was used. That's just uh, based on information, really, that was in the newspaper. Right. We, we haven't seen their formula, gentlemen, but if, if we look at those numbers and, and do the formula we just did, it comes out that way. Not saying that's their formula, I'm saying that that actually works and the fact that it fits too doesn't mean it's the formula, but it looks like that's probably what was done yes. to get us to 17% because it matches up uh, with, with, it, with the population <coughs> dynamics. <coughs> to answer your question, the jury goes up to 17, I think, Correct. under theirs. So the police jury would go up to meet where Alexandria would now be, Pineville would go up to... I don't know the percentage. Uh, we don't know the percentage yet of Pineville. But the point is, at the end of the day, gentlemen, if you're going to do it on population, the other unincorporated areas will be hit, and they need to understand that. And so I think that there is a push by at least the mayor of Ball to tell everybody you need to incorporate so that you can share directly. But if you still do it by population, somebody's got to be hit. Right now the plan is, as far as I can tell, to balance it on the backs of Alexandrians only. And that's, not a, that's a fair statement because according to what we've seen in the paper, the only city taking a hit is Alexandria. And, and so this is a serious question that we have to address. I think that it's something that uh, we can all sit down and talk about. I think that people have to realize that other mayors are going to do the job for their city. Uh, and sometimes in, in life, it's one of those weird places where there can be more than one person that's right. We tend as people to think it's always this way or that way. Uh, this is one of those things that, that cooler heads have to sit down and prevail upon each other to work something and work through this. Uh, Mr. Marshall, we have a, an analysis of some population estimates that we're going to release later in the week once we confirm them. But I think from an initial standpoint, it doesn't show Alexandria going down in any way. It shows the, that Alexandria has tended over time to walk right lockstep with the pe total parish population, which, all, which goes back to support what we all say. So goes Alexandria, so goes the parish. They've all grown up here in that statement. Well, the, the fact is by population, when the parish does well and we have people uh, coming in, Alexandria has gone up. And when people are leaving the parish, it goes down. 
I hear people saying that everyone's moving out of Alexandria to go out in the pair, so it's doing this, and the numbers just don't support that. Uh, our new, our new uh, construction, all the numbers that we use to add to the extrapolation for the census show us that right now our rough estimates, we're above 50,000. And it, it's been a little while since we've been above 50. So the paper reported that we had gone from 49 to 46. We're showing we're above 50. Mr. Hebron was quoted in the paper as saying, if it shows that Alexandria is trending up, we need to revisit this. Well, then we're just going to ask to hold him to his word, because if that's the case, then certainly we need to revisit it. And maybe there's another formula to send to the people. Uh, maybe we have the right formula. Uh, the only thing I can tell you today, Mr. Marshall, is what we've seen is the formula so far, what we think is, does not seem fair to Alexandrians at all. This meeting is going to be attended by the mayors in this immediate area? I believe, I believe all the mayors in the immediate area, and I have a list of the mayors who was invited, Mr. Silver, but I believe it's fair to say that uh, all the parish mayors will, will likely be there, and, uh, barring some personal event. So it will be more of a skull them. session. We should stay out of this thing until such time as you get some more important facts. To uh, know I ask that Mr. Marshall convene the council, and I would ask that the council go and attend with me. Uh, I think it's important for you to hear the information as it comes out when it does so that we don't lose anything in translation. I think you have the right to do that since you've convened, but uh, perhaps the discussion will be just the mayors, but I would like to have you there to ask me questions uh, so that I can ask those questions to the other folks. Uh, I had hoped that today would be more of us listening to the other mayors and their needs, and then we would be able to come back, reconvene, have a little more of a discussion, and then put together a presentation so that at the jury's next committee meeting when this would come up we could do uh, a presentation to them on different proposals and, and how this affects us and give them some hard numbers uh, the numbers that I've given you today though are, are I mean they're straight out of our budget there's no there, there's nothing going on here that that anyone could say is fuzzy in any way quite to the contrary we think that some of the numbers we're seeing about how this should work uh, we can't really understand why that would be good for the parish at all. Uh, everyone will say that every mayor is going to take up for his or her city. There's no question about that. Uh, no one can expect that I wouldn't be taking this position. But what we can do is show objectively to the people of the parish. I'm just Alexandria. These are the numbers. These are what we fund for these programs we're telling you would be affected. Is this what you want? And at the end of the day, I think the voter, uh, no matter where he or she lives in this parish, knows that to harm Alexandria, even if you choose not to live here for a thousand reasons that you do, if you harm Alexandria, you're going to harm the parish. And it's at a time when our growth should be the best in the state, other than the, the major bucks going into the coast uh, that have occurred because of the catastrophes of, of hurricanes Rita and Katrina. This Central Louisiana is, is on an upward trend as much as it's ever been in its history. And to do this now, uh, I believe, would, would be cutting our, our Achilles tendon uh, in a very significant manner. And that, that would uh, be tough on Alexander. Uh, and, Mayor, I would like to ask, if you can, when you prepare those stats and that data, if you could provide it for the media, because I would Absolutely. like them to have that so the public could actually see what's taking place. Absolutely. In fact, we would ask that we be able to put those that data and its support on Channel 4 so that it's running with any meetings and so forth. Uh, people, this is a governmental function. People need to see it. Uh, we're not taking a position at all about how people should vote. We're taking the position under law that we're required to take, which is to inform the people uh, of how this uh, affects them. And I do believe at the end of the day when people vote, they will consider those things. And I think that the proof of that is that this tax was voted on before with the same arguments, and it was roughly at the same po population percentage. Alexandria was 38 then. We're 38 now, uh, and the people still rejected it. Uh, it, it was 43% uh, percent forward. So, parish-wide. So I think those things are there and, and people will have a chance to, to discuss and go through it. Yes, sir. Uh, the mayor, you're just like, I don't think, uh, I mean, we never say anything about how the city of Alexandria work with these other cities. And it's not just like uh, Woodsworth. I mean, our water system is a backup system. He's tied into our system. We just, not recently, maybe last year, did an intergovernment agreement, you know, that he's tied into our water system. And, and, and we talk about the animal shelter, how we've been, we were taking a loss 
for years, and, and, and that's general farm worker. Yes. And, and I, I'm saying all other things, and you can, uh, what about the letter that we had talked about, about you supposed to get with the mayor? You, you and Charles is talking about, Mr. Marshall, the kind of one of the irons of this is we had just sent a letter. We had put together a letter I had sent to uh, uh, Mayor Fields and I have been working on it. It was something that Charles asked me to do and, and uh, actually uh, Chris Roy had asked me to do when he got elected. He said, look, and you heard him say it the day that we were here talking about uh, Mr. Dixon's proposals. Some of his folks, uh, Chris's folks, are just having a lot of trouble uh, infrastructure and operationally in the, our smaller townships and villages. Charles had asked me when we were in Washington to start working to put together uh, a consortium that would go around and look at all the ways that Alexandria and Pineville, as the two bigger cities, could help. And we actually have a letter that Clarence and I are working on now that was going to come out and talk about even this, tax allocations and all that. And it was kind of an irony that while we were working on that to try to come together, we kind of feel like everybody's been working on this and I have to say we, we, we just weren't included. Now Mr. Hebron invited me a few weeks back to sit down with him. Uh, I told him I needed to look at the numbers but we did not know this was coming up at the jury like this. Uh, we're happy for the meeting today. We'd like to address those things today but uh, we're not insensitive to our townships and villages. Uh, we think that they have things they can teach us Mr. Marshall. Uh, about handling things and we think we can provide help to them and we want to be regionally minded and we think that's the better approach. This, this thing will hurt us. As it currently stands, this proposal will significantly hamper Alexandria uh, and I believe in, a few, in short years, in short fashion after that, will hurt the parish. I know we, we not all of our city employees uh, live in the city of Alexandria. That's right. And we're talking about possibility of, if I'm hearing you right, it might be possibilities of laying off employees and the like if we lose this $4 million. $4 million a year, yes, sir, could, have, could go past the quality of life initiatives that we would, we would cut those first. I mean, let's just be honest. When you look at it budgetarily, you, we have to cut the things that are non-essential first. So the first thing that goes are golf courses. Right. Uh, the zoo's going to be last because that's just how I know we all feel. But... It's a non-essential, even though to us it's essential to the quality of life of Alexandria, it's not making sure roads and streets and electricity reaches a home. So all those things get cut in some kind of order that we come up with. Uh, if it's four million, I'd have to defer to Mr. Crutchfield about whether that touches employees. Uh, I think that, um, that that's a possibility. Sometimes you have to cut, you have to cut the pay raises and the you know, they started at one time before. We did just uh, just vote, uh, or the council just just approved contracts for the firemen and policemen, and we're working uh, on implementing one for the the other employees. And uh, as the mayor said, we just have to uh, evaluate that in the budget. But at some point, you can't cut everything else and have just employees. You have to have operating funds as well. So. Uh, you know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on determining exactly what those cuts would have to be. <coughs> Mr. Crutchfield and I, over the last few days, have, have um, been putting our heads together and, and trying to put together a list of all the ways that, um, that we contribute to the parish monetarily. Um, and, and I'd like to point out that the jury receives a million dollars a year for off-road, for the off-roads bridges system. Um, but they don't share any of that fund with us. They don't inspect any of our bridges within the city limits. We do all of that. We don't share in any of the federal or state funds that they receive for road or bridge maintenance. Um, they How much do they get for that? Do you have a figure for that? We don't, but uh, we'll be doing a, a public records request to get those numbers. Um, we provide all of our um, maintenance for drainage within the city limits. We cut all of the ditches. They don't contribute anything to that. We, uh, through a, an agreement with the jury, we cut the grass at O'Hart Matthews Field. We provide animal shelter services that far exceed what they pay us to, um, to cover those expenses. And when I say far exceed, it's about $100,000 a year that, um, that is not covered by what they pay. 
We are uh, in the process of um, providing sewer to sewer district number one. I think we provide some already, and, and they're trying to bring Gun Grundy Cooper in um, on that. Um, the um, OLT tax collection, um, we provide. You right. can explain that better. Well, the uh, parish sales and use tax office collects our occupational license tax, uh, and we pay them in addition to the to our pro rata share of the cost of running that department. We pay a five percent uh, fee to them to do that, which goes uh, to the police jury's general fund. So we, we furnish uh, our flushing trucks yeah. to other cities when they need it. You know, we just had a request from the count. You know, mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, we have had some flooding and stuff like sure. that. We consistently um, are working with them on the Coliseum Utility Bill. Um, we provide city utilities to people that uh, live outside of the city limits in many cases. Um, Woodwork is uh, on our water system and also uh, tied into our emergency communication system. We provide all of their emergency communications. Um, we provide water to IP. Um, and the cost of, of producing and providing that water far exceeds what they're paying us um, for that water. We, we calculated roughly that um, it would cost about 90 cents per unit, and it's a huge unit. I don't remember what the unit is, like 1,000 gallons. Thousand gallons. And we're selling it to them for 31 cents, so you can see that, uh, that we're far short on that. And that has a direct impact on the city of Pineville. Um, if we were to uh, not be able to provide that water. And to people all over the parish that work at IP, IP is a, a big contributor um, to this region. We, as Mr. Smith mentioned, we provide uh, flusher trucks to account. We just passed a um, cooperative endeavor at IGA to do that. And we provide those kind of services to the smaller municipalities throughout the parish. On a regular basis, we continuously are entering into IGAs to assist other um, municipalities. We provide bus service to LSUA and to Pineville, and um, you know that our bus service operates at about a $2 million a year loss, and so immediately that would be something that we would have to, uh, to cut out. I mentioned that all roads and drainage within the city limits is provided by the city. Um, with no assistance from the parish. Um, we are working with the parish um, on the Big Ditch Project, the, the Big Drainage Project, the Alexandria to Gulf of Mexico Drainage Project, that we just recently funded um, another 200 and... It's 325000 $325,000, and they're looking to us for additional funding for that project. Um, <coughs> We have an IGA with the school board, where we provide assistance to the school school board. Um, those are the kind of things that we're not going to be able to continue to provide if um, if we lose this tax. I would hope that you would get an average medical complication to what we're talking about in Dallas, because people understand the bottom line, and if and when you, this thing comes to fruition, and I think that's when we can really fail the home card. More about right. We're, we're working on uh, putting dollars to each of the items uh, listed. And also, I, I just want to say this, also, the quality of life is also for the conventions and everything that takes place within the city and parish. You know, we support a lot of things across the river, you know, with the restaurants, the facilities, and, and you know, all the other endeavors, you know, through our partnerships and intergovernment agreements. So what you said there would mean, I mean, it would be drastic you know, for the city of Alexandria. And I just want the public to know what you just stated, how important it is. It is important. And, and remember, I mean, even the little things like um, our uh, cooperative endeavors where we support Civitan and Dixie and Little League Baseball, children outside of the city limits play on, on those teams and play on our, um, our fields that we uh, build and, and maintain, um, just like people from all over the parish to come and visit the zoo and attend the queuing on the red and our other festivals um, that we support here in the city.
Recess. I may. I may. Recess. I'll